You may have noticed that I'm wearing two different shoes. Probably looks funny. I can tell you it feels funny. But I wanted to make a point. Let's say my left shoe corresponds to a sustainable footprint, meaning we humans consume less natural resources than our planet can regenerate and emit less carbon dioxide than our ocean and forest can reabsorb. That's a stable and healthy condition. Today's situation is more than my other shoe. It's very oversized. At the 2nd of August in 2017, we had already consumed all resources our planet could generate last year. This is like spending all your money until the 18th of a month and then taking a credit from the bank for the rest of the time. For sure, you can do this for some months in a row, but if you don't change your behavior, sooner or later you will run into big problems. We all know the devastating effects of this excessive exploitation global warming, rising of the sea levels, melting of the pole and glacier ice, increasingly extreme climate patterns, and more. The enormity of this problem really frustrates me. What frustrates me even more is that we have solutions to this, but we keep doing things like we always did. Today, I want to share with you how a new solar technology can contribute to a sustainable future of our buildings. Buildings consume about 40% of our total energy demand, so tackling this consumption would significantly reduce our carbon emissions. A building designed along sustainable principle can produce all the power it needs by itself. To achieve this, you first have to reduce the consumption as much as possible by using well-insulated walls or windows, for instance. These technologies are commercially available. Then you need energy for warm water and heating. You can get this in a renewable way from the sun with solar thermal installations or from the ground and air with heat pumps. Also, these technologies are out there. Then you're left with a need for electricity, for cooking, for cooling, running appliances, elevators and more. In general, there are several ways to get to renewable electricity. But how many buildings do you know which have a windmill on the roof or a water power plant in the garden? I guess not so many, because usually it doesn't make sense. But in most regions, the sun provides abundant energy to our roofs and facades. The potential of this energy reaching our building shells is enormous. Let's take Europe as an example. If we would utilize all areas which have a nice orientation to the sun and are not overly shaded, the power generated by photovoltaics would amount to 30% of our total energy demand. But today's photovoltaics have some issues. They do offer a good cost-performance ratio, but they aren't really flexible in terms of their design, and this makes aesthetics a challenge. People often imagine pictures like this when thinking about solar cells at buildings. This may work for solar farms, but when we think of buildings, of streets, of architecture, aesthetics does matter. This is one of the reasons why we don't see more solar cells attached to our buildings. They just don't match. Our team is working at a totally different solar cell technology, which is called organic photovoltaics, or OPV. The term organic describes that the material used for light absorption and charge transport is based on the element carbon and not on metals. We utilize the mixture of a polymer, which is set up by different repeating units, like the pearls in a pearl chain, and a small molecule, which has the shape of a football and is called fullerene. These two compounds are mixed and dissolved to become an ink. And like ink, they can be printed with simple printing techniques like slot die coating on a continuous roll-to-roll -roll process on flexible substrates. The resulting thin layer is the active layer absorbing the energy of the sun. This active layer is extremely efficient. You only need a layer thickness of 0.2 micrometers to absorb the energy of the sun. This is 100 times thinner than a human hair. To give you another example, take one kilogram of the basic material, the polymer, and use it to formulate the active ink. With this amount of ink, 
You can print a solar cell with the size of a complete football field. So, organic photovoltaics is extremely material efficient, which I think is a crucial thing when talking about sustainability. After the printing process, you can have a solar module which could look like this. It looks a bit like a plastic foil and has many of its features. It's lightweight, it's bendable and it's semi-transparent. But it can harvest the, the energy of the sun outside and actually also of this indoor illumination, as you can see with this small LED in the middle. You can take it in its plastic form and take advantage of its low weight and its bendability. The first is important when we think about buildings in warmer regions. Here, the roofs are not designed to bear additionally heavy loads. They aren't designed for snow in winter, for instance. So heavy silicon solar cells cannot be used for light harvesting. But these lightweight solar foils are very well suited. The bendability is important if you want to combine the solar cells with membrane architecture. Imagine the sails of the Sydney Opera as power plants. Of course, you can also combine the foils with conventional construction elements such as glass. Many glass facade elements contain a foil anyway to create laminated safety glass. It's not a big effort to add a second layer of foil in the production process, but then the facade element can also produce electricity. Besides looking good, these integrated solar cells come along with two more important benefits. Do you remember the PV installation attached to the roof I've shown before? In this case, you first install the roof and as a second additional layer, the solar cells, which is adding on your installation costs. In the case of integrated solar cells, at the site of construction, only one element is installed, being at the same time the solar function and the envelope of the building. This is saving in installation costs, but it also saves resources, because two functions are combined into one element. Earlier, I've talked about optics. I really like this solar panel. If you have a different taste or different design needs, no problem. With the printing process, the shape and design of these solar cells can easily be adapted to match the project's needs. This will give the flexibility to architects, to building owners and planners to integrate this electricity-producing technology as they wish. I want to stress that this is not just happening in the labs. It will take some more years to get to mass adoption, but we are at the edge of commercialization meaning there are several companies out there with production capacities. They are ramping up their lines, and so are we with the inks. This smaller footprint is much more comfortable. It is the right size, it is the right scale. We have to come back to the right scale when it comes to energy consumption. And making buildings carbon neutral will play an important role here. In Europe, we have the goal to decarbonize our building stock until 2050. I hope organic photovoltaics will play an important role here as well. Here are a couple of examples. This is the first commercial installation of fully printed organic solar cells. Commercial means that the solar cells are printed on industrial equipment. These so-called solar trees were part of the German pavilion at the World Expo in 2015 in Milan. They provided shading during the day and electricity for the lighting in the evening. You may wonder why this hexagonal shape was chosen for the solar cells. Easy answer. The architects of the pavilion wanted to have a specific shading pattern on the floor and asked for it. And then they were printed as requested. Being far from a real product, this free-form installation hooked the imagination of the visiting architects much more than we expected. And today, I'm very proud to see three of these trees when I look out of my office window. This other installation is closer to the applications we are targeting. In an office building in Sao Paulo, Brazil, organic photovoltaics are integrated into the facade, serving different needs. First, they provided shading for the meeting rooms behind. Second, the logo of the company is displayed in an innovative way. And of course, electricity is produced 
reducing the overall footprint of the building. This is pointing towards a future where buildings are no longer energy consumers, but energy producers. I want to see solar cells seamlessly integrated into our building shelves to be both resource efficient and a pleasure to look at. For roofs, silicon solar cells will often continue to be a good solution, but to exploit the potential of our facades and other areas, such as curved surfaces, semi-transparent areas and shadings, I believe organic photovoltaics will offer a significant contribution and they will be made in any form architects and planners will want them to. Thank you.